Hi, welcome to Inside Yachting. This is the full length review of Murder Yacht Orca Explorer. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, then take a look down below this window. There's a link over to our website, insideyachting.com. That's where you can get all of the relevant information about this and every boat that we have reviewed. We have yacht packs ready to go for Orca Explorer as well as we do for every boat that's currently listed on the market. So from insideyachting.com, take a look over on the right hand side. There's a yacht pack request button there. Click on that, leave us your name, your email address and the name of the boat that you're interested in and we'll get that over to you right away. They're already created for this boat and every boat that's currently on the market. And the yacht pack contains all of the photographs, the detailed descriptions and the full specifications of the boat, as well as some pricing analysis and my personal insights about the boat and the manufacturer. So it's really the next natural step uh, when you're looking to get some more information on any of the boats that you're interested in. So without further ado, let's take a look at Orca Explorer. Uh, she's an 80 foot Hatteras. You can see from the photograph there that she has this great hydraulic swim platform at the back. That increases the overall length to about 86 feet. She has a 21 foot 4 inch beam. Now the boat the uh, salon area is full beam, as is the, the master cabin, so they really take up the uh, advantage of all of that, um, every little square inch of the, the overall beam of the boat, and you can feel that on the interior. Great draft at five foot five inches, cruising speed 21, maximum speed 23. At around 10 to 11 knots, she has about a thousand mile cruising range, which is fantastic for um, a boat of this volume that can also get up to 23 knots. She was launched in 2008. At the time she was launched, uh, she was quote unquote, the highest spec Hatteras that they had ever built. She has a laundry list of upgrades and features and equipment that you would expect to see on a much larger boat. And we'll see some of that as we go further into the uh, review. Now, the boat is here in South Florida. It's here to sell. It's been um, maintained by crew, but it's not going to be used in, until the boat um, sells and moves on to the next owner. So great opportunity to get a boat that's been fantastically maintained and it's really an impeccable condition. Now the asking price here, it says there 4,250,000 in the time that I put this brochure together and now the price has actually been lowered. Um, so I'll cross that out and in there now asking 3,999,000. So that puts her right in between the other 80s that are also on the market. But this one is much, much more of a boat than the others. The, the equipment that's fitted and the overall condition of this boat just blows all the others completely out of the water. So this is a fantastic deal and that's why we're reviewing it uh, here today. So let's take a look at some of the photographs. Uh, nice running shots here. Um, the tender that you see in those two lower photographs, that's a Boston Whaler tender. You can actually fit a much larger tender on board Orca Explorer than you can with the other 80 enclosed bridges, even the open um, fly bridges. Because of that hydraulic swim platform, it means it can hold uh, just a, a larger uh, boat down there. Because it has that hydraulic swim platform, it means that you don't need the crane or the davit up on the upper deck. It also has the knock on effect that that entire area is now no longer a working area. It means that it can all be teak, which it is here on Orca Explorer. Also means that it's completely free and open for uh, guest uses. They've got some sun lounges out there. They did have some tables and thin things out there as well. So that hydraulic swim platform, the benefits of that are, are really sort of have a, a knock on effect into other areas of the boat, other than just being able to hold a, a bigger tender. Now that tender also has, and we can see that here at the bottom on the, um, on the left hand side, ha it has increased fuel capacity. So the tender actually has about 150 mile cruising range. So for, for a tender on a, on an 80 foot boat to be able to go as far and wide as this can also has that uh, bimini top on there. Just, you can really go on some great adventures. It's, it's been designed to hold, uh, dive tanks and dive equipment. You can fish off this. Um, 
it really is a, a, a great tender. Um, just look at the size of it compared with a, a smaller rib that you'd expect to see on this type of boat. The aft deck, uh, nice teak area, great teak varnish table, nice bench seating at the back there as well, plenty of storage underneath there. You can see on that top photograph on the right hand side, there's a security camera there. The boat is equipped with the ghost system, which is the remote security uh, tracking. You can get text messages on your phone if the boat moves or you can set it up to uh, to detect uh, sort of movements on board as, as well. Uh, any alarms that come on on the boat through the central management system, they can also be transferred through to your phone as well. So a great feature there. Again, something that you'd expect to see on a, on a larger boat. Moving into the interior, this is the only um, 80 Hatteras that has this contemporary interior. All of the others are, are pretty traditional like Hatteras usually do. Heavy on the woods, dark woods, um, it sort of makes it feel a, a little bit, um, not claustrophobic, but it doesn't feel as open and airy as Orca Explorer does. They're usually much heavier on the millwork around the mullions uh, between the windows and, and things as well. So as you can see here, lots of light neutral tones. The current owner is the, the same person that, that built the boat. So the boat's a, a one owner um, yacht. He brought all of his own design team in to put the interior together. So you'll see much more uh, sort of high-end finishes on board this boat than you will in, in any of the others. So looking through, it has that uh, sort of contemporary feel continuing through into the dining room, some nice woods and, and uh, veneers that they've used in here as well. The same with the, the dining table. There's a, a, a storage a unit over to the port side and that same wood is continued um, into the day head here. Uh, this is an on deck day head. Um, you can see that on the bottom photograph on the left hand side. Now the boat is a country style uh, layout into the galley um, and lots of upgraded stainless steel appliances in here as well. A huge uh, double fridge freezer. They have uh, lots of melee equipment in here um, and, and you can see that in, in some of the other the photographs. Um, of this galley area, but really nice open plan area. It has some uh, bench seating around the forward end. And then you can see on this photograph here on the, the top on the uh, left hand side has those forward angled windows that really flood this area full of uh, natural, natural uh, sunlight and, and really sort of um, opens this area up to the, to the outside. Has a nice Wenge flooring, uh, dark colored flooring. The countertops are all upgraded. They're uh, a darker granite countertop. There's a pop-up TV that comes out of here as well. You can just see that on the lower photograph on the left-hand side. Now there are also uh, side doors here that give you access onto the, to the bow area. And they have a couple of uh, large bean bags and things which they set up on that bow area as well. So um, really great great uh, sort of social area here. It's like uh, any ranch or any house. The majority of time people spend um, on board is in the this sort of countryside kitchen. That's where the heart of the, the heart of the boat is. And at the top on the uh, right hand side, that's what you can see some of the some more of those uh, upgraded appliances there. Now moving upstairs, uh, we come into the enclosed flybridge. Now because the hydraulic platform means you don't need to have any of this uh, sort of cranes or, or davits up on the exterior part of the flybridge. Means that that area now becomes much more user friendly and much larger as far as the square footage that is uh, usable. So it's really um, uh, sort of the best of both worlds. This you have this uh, con uh, sort of controlled environment and a nice comfortable area in the enclosed section of the flybridge. But then you also have this huge exterior deck space. Usually with a enclosed flybridge, you don't really have much exterior space up here. So it's sort of a, um, a give and take. But with the way that they've designed this boat, you really get the best of both worlds. So it's a fantastic um, sort of end product that you that you uh, end up with here. Now, this area is sort of a, um, a blank canvas for me. The, to the two seats here are 
um, freestanding so you, they can be removed if someone wanted to put some uh, larger love seats or some sofas up here and a larger coffee table that could very easily be done as she stands now this area just really opens herself up for a great entertaining area that tv that's there they have three of these large tvs they're all bang and olsen um, there's the one here there's one in the salon area and there's one in the master cabin as well now all of the navigation screens can be transferred onto these bang and olsen systems so for example, down in the master cabin, you actually have control of all of the security cameras. There's a FLIR night vision camera on board. You can also um, overlay the chart plotters and the radars and, and things onto the uh, cabin, uh, the master cabin TV. So if you're an anchor, you can still have that on the TV and be able to monitor, make sure that, that you're not dragging or no one else is getting uh, close to you. So it's a great option there. The lower photograph on the left hand side, you can see those five navigation screens. Now they have just about every piece of equipment that you could possibly imagine relayed through to this. They have a, an upgraded um, ships management uh, screen, which uh, gives you readouts of all the bilges, all the tanks, any alarms that are going off, the um, running temperatures, pressures, RPMs, and digital readouts from the engines are up here as well. Now, all of this can be um, interchanged between the screens. You can have it laid out any way that you want. They also have um, handheld controls so that you can um, do it from the control all of that from being back in these seats if you don't want to lean forwards and and control all of that equipment so the the amount of thought process that has gone into to this navigation area alone um, is is just quite in, in, impressive and and like i said before really blows anything else um, completely out of the water um, moving down into the uh, lower accommodation areas in, in fact before before i go down there let's just take one last look at the uh, flybridge here so on that top photograph that you can see on the right hand side just to the bottom left hand corner of that photograph you can see a little unit there they actually have doubled up on the exterior grills now these are the gagno grills that's the um, industrial manufacturer that that fits equipment on um, on some of the larger vessels these are by far the highest powered grills that you see fitted on on any boat and they've, and they've gone ahead and doubled them up on um, on orca explorer now there are also four external wing stations on board now right at the the far end of this photograph that's on the top on the um, right hand side now i'll zoom in on on that for for you as well there's a hatch there that hatch folds out and you have um, full control over the engines, the bow and stern thruster, uh, the RPMs. You can start and stop the engines from, from there as well. So there's one either side of, of this um, flybridge area. And there's also the same units down on the uh, main deck aft so that you can be down there and sort of help handle lines and, and things at the same time as, as controlling the, controlling the, uh, the vessel. So back to the uh, master cabin here. Now this is again continuing that that contemporary feel. You really get a, a sort of a, a roomy and airy feel in this cabin. Great head height here. You can see those huge hull side windows on on either side. The center one of those uh, portholes actually opens right up, <clears throat> and they have um, screens and netting that can go in there and and sort of stop the bugs from coming in as well. Now there's one entrance into the the large ensuite bathroom in here. There is an option from Hatteras. You can have his and hers. These guys have chosen to just go for the one entrance. And then on the opposite side, they have this enormous uh, cedar-lined walk-in closet that, as you can see from the, the bottom photograph there on the left-hand side, really is a, a huge closet. And, and without that, you're kind of limited in the hanging space in this room. So to have that in here, it, it really um, hugely increases the, the storage capacity of this cabin. Now, there's lots of other storage areas here. They have a, a nice little um, sofa to the starboard side and, and plenty of storage underneath the bed here. It's on um, hydraulic lifts that, that are very easy to lift up. 
That uh, photograph at the top on the left, you can see the other Bang & Olufsen TV there. There is a small control panel next to the bed, um, just on the far side of the bed as we're looking at it. It has a joystick there so you can um, control the cameras. It also has a selection screen so that you can select which of the navigation screens you would like to see on this TV as well. Um, and then on the right hand side, we can see some of the um, same sort of veneer finishes to this cabinet as are upstairs in the dining room. Nice standalone sinks there as well, real high-end um, finish and, and feel to this cabin. The other cabins, uh, the one at the top on the right-hand side, the twin, that's actually a Pullman that's on the left-hand side there, so this cabin can be um, converted into sort of a uh, more of a suite. There's that um, section underneath the Pullman is, is sort of a, a bench seat there. Uh, the Ford VIP, this has been converted into sort of a nanny's cabin. So it has a nice large double bed underneath plus the, the bunk up top. So it's perfect for uh, the kids and, and the nanny. Or um, if you have a, a couple with a small child, it, it's a great option for them there as well. And a nice skylight in that room. Each of these cabins are en suite. So it's a four stateroom boat with five um, bathrooms, one of them being the on deck day head up in the, uh, in the main deck. And they're full bathrooms, the, the four that are on the suite, nice, um, sort of wash basin and, and vanity area and, and the, uh, the shower in there as well. Uh, this cabin that's on the left hand side, right now it's set up in these photographs at least as a gym. At the moment, it's been converted into more of an, an office sort of layout, so it has a, a nice desk in there. This is also an ensuite bathroom. But look at the, the great sort of um, diverse uh, area that this is and, and the, the usability of this to be converted into either a cabin or as an office or, or a gym as they have it laid out here. So those two Pullman beds are actually quite wide beds. Um, they're not the usual skinny sort of bunks that, that fold down on, on some of the other Pullman examples that you may have seen. So a very comfortable cabin when this is converted into the cabin. And like I said, the, um, the ensuite there as well. All of these cabins have their own um, satellite receiver and, and flat screen TV. They also have Xboxes in each of these cabins as well. So um, lots and lots of equipment and, and plenty to keep anyone, anyone entertained. Now the boat has a great crew cabin back aft. That's a perfect place for the crew cabin right next to the um, engine room and, and there to respond to any alarms or anything. Um, it also has a nice little crew area. So they have their own uh, sort of limited cooking facilities. They've got a fridge down there, nice crew table down there as well. So it's great for, and this is really what the owner designed the, the boat for was um, extended traveling and, and almost livable. So he really wanted to give the crew their own area back there and, and have it comfortable for them. So that's what we can see here at the, um, at the bottom on the right hand side is the king size bed. This bed can be split into two single beds so if you don't have a couple, if you have two singles on board, then that is uh, still going to be a good cabin and, and very user friendly. Um, and this has their own bathroom down, down here as well. Uh, so that at the bottom on the uh, left hand side, this is the sort of crew area. You can see they have a microwave in there. There's the fridge, that access door that you can see there that is out onto the swim platform. They also have another entrance point which leads up onto the main deck aft as well. Now, the one of the, the best shown areas on the boat is actually the engine room. These engines are spotless. They've just had um, one of the largest services done on them. Um, the boat can have a, an extended MTU warranty on it for another year, uh, but really great engine, very, very well maintained. There isn't a weep of oil, a seep of fuel. There is no leaks anywhere on these engines All the generators. Um, this is really one of the best maintained um, boats that, that I've been on and uh, really has had um, an open checkbook sort of concept to, uh, to that maintenance um, side of things. So let's look into some of the um, written specs very briefly because I am aware of the fact that I have been talking about this boat for, for a long time. 
80 foot length overall. It does have that extra six feet at the back for the hydraulic swim platform. Uh, five foot five inches is the draft. Almost 21 and a half feet um, in overall beam. So very, very beamy boat. The um, overall range of that, that sort of uh, 10 to 11 knot speed is about a thousand miles. Um, the price there has been reduced from that 4,250,000 number to their current ask, which is 3,995,000. Uh, Has the MTU M91 engines. Uh, the boat was launched in 2008. Um, it, the hull is actually stamped 2009, um, but the boat shows like a, a brand new boat. It really is one of the, the best um options available in this sort of um, 70 to, to 80 foot range. Four stateroom layout, full beam master as we saw, it has five bathrooms, four of them being en suite and the one um, day head which is on deck. So looking through some of these some of these other uh, specs here, I've picked out some of the main selling features here. So she has zero speed stabilizers, VSAT which is the global data streaming which you never see on a boat of this size. Uh, has the ghost security system on board. Has that marvelous hydraulic swim platform, which means you can hold a much bigger tender. Um, bow and stern thrusters. They actually installed a, a plate underneath the uh, stern thruster, which means that it picks up the the aft and, and actually throws the wash from the props further back away from that swim platform which is a great modification to uh to the overall sort of whole shape um has a hydraulic um, passerelle which comes out from the from the steps on the starboard side um has a zeus which is like a fleur night vision camera it can actually target heat sources and automatically uh, track that that heat source which is amazing for uh, a, if someone goes overboard, it means you can target them and track them without having to dedicate one person to standing there and watching them. Uh, also, if you're on night passages, you can pick out submerged um, objects in the water and be able to safely navigate around them. Um, has a, a Bauer dive compressor on board. They do have two or three full dive setups on board as well with the tanks and the BCDs, all the, the fins and, and masks. The boat actually has two underwater scooters that, that will be included in the, in the sail as well. So uh, amazing sort of optional extras that have gone into this, uh, into this boat. I actually, um, forgot to mention up in the enclosed section of the flybridge, there are four window sections that actually drop down. They're on, um, electric, uh, sort of motors. And that, once that's opened up and, and the back doors opened up, really, opens that entire area up to the outside and almost feels like um, like an, an open flybridge uh, model rather than a, an enclosed bridge model. So as I said before, really is the best of, of both worlds. So this write-up is is pretty, um, pretty in-depth. I've picked out all of the mechanical equipment, all the upgrades, the Underwater equipment, deck equipment here, details the air conditioning plant, which has also been upgraded and, and is actually um, a much larger plant than you would really need. But what's nice about that is you can rotate those compressors um, and reduce the hours on, on each one of them because you can run, run the whole boat just on one compressor. You don't have one running all the time and then the second kicking in and kicking out. It's actually just the one compressor starts cools the boat down and then and then stops and then once it raises up a, a couple of degrees and, and flicks on the the sort of automatic uh, temperature control in it and it starts again so much less hours on that uh, running equipment um, here details all the communication and navigation equipment that is very very extensive also the electrical equipment on board as well the boat does have a shore power converter so it can take any electricity whether it's 50 hertz 60 hertz or variable voltages it can convert that all to usable power uh, which is another great feature if you're thinking about going sort of far and wide with uh, with the boat so i'll leave it at that there really is too much to to go through and, and pick out from the from the brochure um, i encourage you to get that yacht pack 
this will give you all of the detailed descriptions and the full specifications for the boat, as well as some pricing analysis um, and all the photographs and, and some sort of insights and things as well. So from the website insideyachting.com, over on the right hand side, there is a yacht pack request button. The yacht pack's already created for this boat as it is for every boat that's on the market. So click on that button, leave us your name, your email address and the um, best um, uh, best email address and, and the boat that you're interested in and we'll get that yacht pack off to you uh, right away. So thanks for joining me. Uh, a great boat. I can't express enough how um, how how good of an option this is if you're looking in, in this size range. So click on some of the other reviews and I'll see you over there. Thanks.